Hello everyone, the greetings of the Lord Jesus Christ for all of you, that his, his peace may be upon you. I'm Pastor Dr. Richard Severbergen, a friend of Dr. Josef Naswala, and I'm very happy to be here on Cross TV with you today. And today I want to start a new school of ministry for you, the School of Prophecy. So in the four, in four next classes we will have the whole school of prophecy. And today we will start with the first lesson, how the school of prophecy works. The school of prophecy for you to understand is that our God is a prophetical God. If we open the Bible and we go to the first Bible verse in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it's, it, it is written, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God is above creation. In this reality, in this creation that we live in, the reality that God created... There is the beginning, that means time. We live in time. Not only that we live in time, it's also space. Heaven, there's space. We are in a space. You are in a room, that is a space. You are in a city, that is a space. The earth is a space. So we have time, we have space, and there is substance. Because we are on this earth. In this earth, everything is made of substance. So this reality is made out of time, substance, and of space. Now the focus today is about prophecy, and prophecy has to do with time. But God is above this creation. He created, he's above it, he's not controlled by this creation. So God is not physical stuff, he's not substance. God is spirit, he's invisible, so it is not substance. God is also not limited to this space. God is everywhere, he's above space. God holds this whole creation in his hand. God is above space. But God is most important above time. God has no beginning. God has no end. God is not inside time. He's outside of time. And because God is outside of time, he knows everything. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. That's why the Bible calls God the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end of everything. Because he is above time. Now, when God is above time, it means that he already knows everything. He knows our past, our present, and our future. He knows everything that's going to happen. The Word of God even tells that before we were created, God already foreknew us and already knew his plan about us and what was going to happen in our life. So God is a prophetical God. Now, the other thing is that when we're going to do the first lesson about prophecy... Knowing that God is a God of prophecy because he's above time, he knows the future. We know, must know that the first level of prophecy are these two words, encourage and rebuke. Later I will explain to you everything during this first lesson. What it means to encourage and to rebuke. But that is the first level of prophecy. But we need to understand something about the word of God and the power of the word of God and the power of words in general. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, and that's a very important verse there in Proverbs 18, verse 21, and I will read it to you. It's written there, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Life and death is in power of the tongue. God says that words that have been uttered, words that have been said, have power. Power to give life or power to destroy. Because the words that we say, we are prophesying them. Are words that have power and effect that will put things in motion. And if we say good things, we put life in motion. And if we say bad things, we are sowing death into life. We know very well in relationships. If we say bad things to our partners in our friends and to our family members, that means that we are destroying the relationship. But if we say words of encouragement, words of blessing, we are making things flourish and things going to happen. There is power in the words that we say. So our words have prophetical power. That's what here Proverbs is saying. And the word of God have way much more prophetical power than our words that we say. If 
the words of human being have power. The word of God has way much more power. That's why if we go there to prophet Josiah chapter 55 verse 11, we will read the following in Josiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And, I, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. God says that his word has power. And his word will always accomplish what it was sent out to do. So the word of God, this here that it's written, the spoken word of God will fulfill and accomplish his purpose. So there's power in the word of God. In the same, we will read that the word of God is so powerful in Hebrew chapter 4, the epistle to the church of Hebrew in the New Testament, chapter 4, verse 12, we will read something else about the power of the word of God. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the, the dividing aster of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is powerful. Not only it will fulfill the purpose what it is said, it will cut through everything and it will penetrate everything, piercing through even to the most inner being of our soul and our mind and of our spirit. So God's word is powerful. And what does God do with this powerful word? We must understand this, that when we proclaim the word of God, we must believe that the word of God is true. That's the first thing. We need to believe it is true. Everything that is written in the word of God, we must believe it's true. Then we must believe and say with power and authority. Because God, in the word of God, goes about the past. The word of God goes about the present. And the word of God goes to the, about the future. Explain it is very fast to you. The past is when we read the whole Old Testament, uh, Old Testament and explain everything that happened with the people of God. The present is that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, for all eternity. When we read the gospel and we see Jesus on earth... Jesus is risen from the dead. He's still alive. He's still in our midst. And in the name of Jesus, all the same miracles that we read in the gospel of, in the gospels, in the four gospels, are here for us today for your life. That is the present. The gospel of Jesus are the present. And what is the future? The future is all the prophecies in the book of Apocalypse, Revelation, revealing to us all the things that are going to come. And about heaven, that we will live in all eternity with God. Today we live in a world that is death, destruction, violence. We need police, we need doctors. But in the future in heaven, there will be paradise. And we don't need nothing of that. And that's what God wants you to go, that you will go to heaven. So the Bible tells to us, the past, the present, and the future. And we need to believe that it is true. That every word that is written here shall come to pass and shall happen. Or what already has happened, it's going to happen today. And it is definitely going to happen in the future. So we need to speak the word of God with power authority. So if we speak about if it is today, I need to speak Jesus heals you today. Jesus saves you of all your sins today. He forgives you and he gives you new life. And you can become a child of God. And you will go to heaven where there's no sickness and there's no death. I am now prophesying over your life. Because I'm declaring the word of God with power and authority. So... We see that Jesus spoke the word with power and authority. We as disciples of Jesus, the follower of Jesus, must speak like him and not like the Pharisees who say, maybe God will heal. Maybe God will save. Maybe God will forgive. Maybe there will be in heaven. One day, no, we need to speak with power and authority. God heals you today. God saves you today. And you go to heaven when you believe in Jesus. You are going to heaven. You are a saint and you will have a life and a life in abundance. That's what we must proclaim. So when we proclaim with power authority, we are prophesying that the word of God will happen because the word of God has power and authority and God will accomplish his word. So this is the foundation of prophecy. 
Now, going to the first level of prophecy that I already said to you, with the two words, what is to rebuke and to encourage. And what does that mean, encourage and to rebuke? Encourage is to say to someone, the way that you're walking, keep going on that way, keep doing what you're doing, because if you're going to walk that way and do what you're doing, you will have great results. Because if you do this, and let's say, if you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, God will please with that and God will bless you. If you sow richly and you sow in abundance, you will reap in abundance. So when you give your tithings and offerings to the church, you so prosper. That is the promise of the Lord. So that is encouraging. When somebody is doing something, say, keep doing on that because the word of God says promises that when you do this, you will have this reward. Like the commandment, honor your father and mother and you so live long. So I can say to everyone, if you honor your father and mother, you're honoring father and mother, you shall live long and you shall live a blessed life. That is the promise of God. So I'm encouraging someone to keep doing what he's doing to receive and reap the promises that God says in his word that will follow the person who's doing and obeying the word of God. Now, what is rebuking? Rebuking is when someone is doing something that the Bible says that is sin, something that is wrong. And the Bible says if you do this sin, there will be this kind of consequences. Then rebuking is to say to someone who is committing that sin, hey, stop doing that because if you don't stop doing that, you will reap this. You will receive this punishment. If you are doing this kind of sin, you will have this problem future on. Your lives will be destroyed. If you don't build your house upon the rock, but you build your house upon the sand, problems will come and your house will be destroyed by the flood and by the storm. You will tumble down. So I am rebuking someone, prophesying what will happen in the future if he continue doing that sin and continue to be rebellious against God. So that is the basic level of prophecy, encouraging and rebuking. Now I want to show to you that upon the word of God to the person Barnabas. Barnabas is one of the apostles in the New Testament that we will see. Starting in the book of Acts, chapter 4, we will first time meet this great man of God. So open your Bibles with me in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 36, where we will meet Barnabas for the first time. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, in other words, the son of encouragement, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus. So you have this man who was Joseph, a Levite, who came to the church, but he has this attitude. When he was in the church, he greeted everybody and he's saying, hey, you are a prayer warrior. You prayed and God will give answers to your prayer. Hey, hello, my brother and sister. You are playing music. Keep on worshiping God because if you worship God, the heavens will open and the blessings of God will pour upon us. Amen. Preacher, God has given you a mighty word. Preach it with power and authority and signs and wonders will happen. God is going to use you and signs and wonders will happen in our midst. So he was encouraging everyone. He was saying to people, do what the word of God says. Because if you do what the word of God says, you will reap these results. This will happen in your life. So he was prophesying, encouraging everybody in the church. And the prophets like that. And then uh, the, the, the apostles like that. And the apostles said to Barnabas, uh, no, to Joseph, your name is going to become Barnabas now. You're going to be the son of encouragement. Because you're encouraging everyone. And I remember that when I was a young uh, a teenager in the church in the Netherlands with an uh, American missionary in the Netherlands called Kai Holland. In the church I was also encouraging everyone. And he said, you're like Barnabas. You need to keep doing that to everyone. And do that more, with more uh, let's say, <laughs> to everyone. Don't be afraid. Use what God gave to you. Encourage everyone. And that's what must be our attitude in the church. We must come in the church with this positive attitude. The power of life and death are in the power of the tongue. So we must come in the church encouraging everybody, 
showing life in their lives, saying to them, do what God says, what you need to do in the word of God. And if you fulfill the word of God, you will reap the blessings of God in your life. And that will come to pass. It shall happen. And that is prophesying, my friends. Now, let's see how this works in action in the life of Barnabas. If we go to chapter 9, verse 27, and I will explain the context to you, you all know the story of Saul. Saul was a man, a Pharisee, that hated the church, wanted to destroy the early Christian church, persecuted the Christians. He was like a terrorist, throwing them in jail, burning down the churches, and persecuting every Christian. And this man Saul, all the Christians were afraid of him. But God loved this man, and God on the road to Damascus, when he was traveling to Damascus, Jesus met Saul personally. He became a believer to this encounter with Jesus, and now he went to the church of Jerusalem to present himself as a new brother and sister. Now you must imagine, like, you, uh, like us, if today the person that makes your life most miserable, the person who is the biggest threat to your life, the person who makes you suffer the most, come to the church and say, I am saved. I accept Jesus Christ. Will you believe that? Do you, do you want him as your brother or as your sister? Most of us will doubt it. Most of us will be afraid of the person. Still, if the person is safe, but we don't know really. We don't know if really have happened. So when Saul came to the church in Jerusalem, the Bible tells that even the apostles didn't want to greet him. Nobody wanted to greet him. Nobody wanted to give a hand to him and say, hey, my brother, nice that you are in the church. When Barnabas saw that everyone was doubting what God did in the life of Saul, that no one believed that he really was saved, that he really was transformed by the power of God, that nothing is impossible with God, that even our worst enemy, our persecutor, can become a believer, can become saved. When people didn't believe that, Barnabas went to the people and said to the people, look, he's my brother, he's saved, and he introduced to everyone. Because Barnabas believed in the transformating power of God. We must believe that the word of God really happens. We must have faith in the word of God, that God can change lives. So Barnabas, he was sent by the church of Jerusalem to go to the church of Antiochia, because it was for the first time that non-Jews came to believe that Arabic people, that Greek people, Roman people, people from Africa, from all over the world that live in Antinochia, came to salvation. That the salvation of Jesus Christ in the kingdom of Jesus is not only for the Israelites, not only for the Jews, but for all the nations of the world. Because everyone was created in the image and likeness of God. So they were doubting if that heathens, because that's the word for non-Israelite, heathens, pagans, could really come to faith and become believers. So who did they send? They sent Barnabas because he believed that the power of God, that the word of God will accomplish. So he went to the church of Antiochia and he saw that the heathens became Christians and he became the pastor there and he sent a report saying, yes, the word of God has fulfilled because he's a believer in the power of the word of God. When he was there, he shared his power and authority with Saul because he remembered that he said that Saul is now a brother. And he said that Saul will begin to become a great man of God. What we prophesy, what we say, we must put in action. No one really has called Saul to the ministry. So then Barnabas went to Cyprus, looked up Saul and said, your name is now Paul and you're going to come into Antiochia, work together with me and you're going to become a great man of God that I already said and I will give you opportunity. So when we say something in somebody's life that we say God is going to use you powerfully, if you as pastor say to someone, yeah, God will use as a musician, you must give him space and opportunity to play the music in the church service. When you say you're going to become a preacher and God is going to use you powerful in the ministry of the word, you need to give him opportunity to preach, to accomplish that, to become reality. And that what uh, Barnabas did in the life of Paul. He called them, say, I said that you are a man of God, and now you're going to work as a man of God to be co-pastor with me in the church of Antinochia. So what we see next, and that is very powerful, that they both are sent out to become the first missionaries. 
and they do a big mission trip. And when they are doing a big mission trip, they bring young people with them. And one of the young people is called Mark. But Mark is not very strong for the ministry yet. He's making a lot of mistakes. So in the next mission trip, Paul doesn't want to bring Mark along. But Barnabas wants to bring Mark along because he said, I believe in him. I say that he's going to become a great man of God. We are not seeing it today, but I know in the future it will be. And that is faith in prophecy, that you believe that in the future it will happen. Not what we are seeing now in this moment. Paul didn't believe. And because of this, they had an argument. And Paul made his own mission team that we all know in the books of Acts. And Barnabas went with Mark. What happened? We know that in the future, in the epistles of Paul himself, in the book of Timothy, in the epistle of Timothy, he says when he's in prison and nobody wants to be together with him, he said, call Mark to me because he's the only one who's not afraid to be with, together with me in the ministry in the prison. He's powerful in the ministry. So future in life, Paul's recognized that Mark became this great man of God. So here you see the power of prophecy, the power of encouragement, what Barnabas had. Barnabas said, I believe in this young man. Even if we don't see it today, I know in the future he's going to become this big man of God. If we know he became this big man of God, not only by the testimony of Paul, but also because Mark wrote the gospel of Mark. So we have this great and mighty testimonies what Barnabas did. Now I want to tell to you that we need to encourage and we need to rebuke. And through the word of God. So you must as a prophet in the first level, believing that God is a prophetical God, that the word of God has power and authority, that everything that is in the word of God will accomplish what it said it will accomplish, so that we must prophesy it. And how do we prophesy it in the most basic level? Is that when the word of God says, if you do this, you will reap these results. Because the Bible is very clearly, if you walk the way that will lead to heaven, you will come to heaven. And if you walk the way that will lead to death, you will go to hell. So the Bible is very clearly with all the instructions. And we need to proclaim these instructions, what is in the word of God, with power and authority. Saying to our fellow men, and especially to our brothers and sisters in the church, keep doing what God asks you to do, keep praying, keep fasting, and the door will open. The Bible says, the one who knocks, the door will open. The Bible says very clearly, the one who seeks will find. The one who asks will receive an answer. So we need to encourage our brothers and sisters in the church to keep on doing because they will reap the result that is prophesying in their lives. In the same way, we must also rebuke the people of the world that are doing sin that we're saying, hey, if you're smoking, you're going to get health problems. That is already proven itself by the medical world. So we need to say it really, not only say you will get problems here on earth, you will get also problems spiritually. You will really have big problems. Things will happen in your life that are bad if you continue doing sin, if you continue to keep on drinking, if you continue to keep on smoking. Bad things are going to happen. That is for sure. That is a fact. So we need to prophesy with power authority. We must not be like the parasites. We must say it with power and authority. And so we must proclaim prophesying. Prophesying healing that in the name of Jesus there is healing if we pray to God. That in the name of Jesus demons will be cast out. That is prophesying because we are saying things that will happen. Things that will occur if we do this. So if you really want to be involved in the ministry of prophecy, and God called all of us to be in the ministry of prophecy, God is a prophetical God that wants us to be the people of the word of God, because the first level of prophecy is just proclaiming the word of God. It's proclaiming what God already has revealed. So it is not a new revelation. It's not a specific revelation. It is 
prophesying that the word of God is true. That the word of God will happen as it is written. And that is for all the Christians, for all the believers. All the believers can walk in the ministry of encouragement, in the ministry of rebuking. What is the first level of prophecy? So if you say to me, I want to have this in my life. I have gone to pray with you that God will rise you up to use the word of God with power and authority in encouragement and rebuking. The same thing is if you are listening to this and you don't know Jesus yet, you don't know the power of the word of God, I want to pray for you that you will have a true account of it, the power of God, and that the God of this living word, because God is alive, the God of the living word will live inside your heart. And you will see that the word of God, the promises of God, will come to pass in your life. The devil came to rob, kill, destroy, but Jesus came to give life and life in abundantly. You are going to live, and you're going to live a life, a life in abundantly. So let's pray together. Our beloved Father, for all those who don't know your word yet, but they want to have a living relationship with you. They want to know who you are and that the word of God will become real in their lives. God, come in inside their lives. You fill them up with your presence that they may be touched by you now and they may read your word and start believing your word that the power of life and death is inside of your word and those who believe will live and those who will not believe will die. Those who believe will have eternal life. Those who don't believe will go to hell and will perish. But you, O oh God, have chosen us and we are filled by your Holy Spirit. We are filled by your word. We are grateful and thankful for that. And God, for all those who say, I want to become a stronger Christian. I want to have faith. Faith that will move mountains. I want to believe the word of God. To have the power to encourage and the power to rebuke. The power to proclaim life over my brothers and sisters. And the power to warn people not to go in the wrong direction. God, give me the faith to believe your word. Give me the faith that you are the Alpha and Omega. And that every word that you said will accomplish and will be fulfilled. That I may say with power and authority, in Jesus' name, you will be healed. In Jesus' name you will be delivered in Jesus name you will receive your victory in Jesus name obey his commandments and the blessings of God will be upon you that in Jesus name signs wonders and miracles will happen the God of the God will do everything for us nothing is impossible for God God is healing us right now and God I need to be touched by you at this moment that you touch the person that is listening right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you may receive your healing that you may receive your deliverance that you may receive your victory at this moment God is blessing you my brother and sister and with the power and authority of God I am prophesying right now to everyone who listening this program put your hand on the television and receive your victory in the mighty in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Here is Pastor Dr. Richard from Brazil. Jesus loves you. See you next time.